Watch out! Apollo Justice Ace Attorney is a game that has been rated T by the ESRB content rating system due to it featuring mild blood, suggestive themes, and violent references? Whatever those are. Oh well. Viewer discretion is advised for this Let's Play series. Hey there, Artie! And guess. Welcome back to Apollo Justice Ace Attorney, everybody. So, last time we learned Phoenix Wright's daughter is like a magician girl who's pretty old considering pretty old. he hasn't been married for one. Like, I wonder he's if only been married be, for a maximum of seven years. I'm gonna wonder if there's like a scandal that's been happening for a while. I, I don't know. Anyhow, anyway. maybe we'll figure it out. We're on the last part of Turnabout Trump today. What's important is day one trial three ladder. people got burritos without us. Yes, that clearly is canon and that happened. Anyways, it's April 20th. It's 2.45 p.m. in district court room showdown. number two. Showdown against pain. <laughs> the showdown at Chainsaw Gap. Court will now reconvene. Defense attorney Christoph Gavin, will you please take the stand? In a minute, your honor, I'm finishing my burrito. <laughs> you only gave us ten minutes. Now then, if you would, Mr. Payne. Y yes, your honor. Um, will Mr. Uh, the witness state his name and occupation? Is this farce necessary, your honor? Believe me, far stranger fiends have gone on in this courtroom. We've had a parrot testify. We've, we've had a child we've had an testify. We've had an acrobat in a wheelchair with hummingbirds Earth. pecking the defense. We've, we've had, had a physically abusive prosecutor. We've had the... Um, we've had a guy drinking coffee and throwing it at people. We've had we've, this We had this girl who came in who looked like an evil Princess Peach. Who was that? Dahlia. She doesn't have blonde hair or a pink dress. Okay, <laughs> if she was a pinkish white dress... That was She white. also has butterflies. Peach doesn't have butterflies? What are you talking about? In, in the N64, one around her castle. That's not her. That's true. <laughs> Peach and Dolly have like nothing to call it except they're both girls who are pretty. Who have paracels. Oh, that's true. Anyhow. <laughs> Anyhow. <laughs> Fine, I'll play along. First, there's one thing we need to have made clear. How did you know about the secret beneath the victim's hat? By secret, I'm guessing he means the fact that Mr. Smith was bald. Forgive my curiosity, but what is it about this fellow's head? Your honor seems to have an inordinate interest in it. Objection! Hey! I wouldn't call it inordinate, Mr. Gavin. Here you go. M Mr. Wright! It's your old objection fee! What do you think you're doing, Wright? Wow, things sure look different from the other side. You know what I mean, Apollo? Speaking of looking from the other side, let's consider something for a second. The victim wore that hat all night, never once taking it off, except for that one time. That one time being the instant he was hit. Oh! When Mr. Wright re returned from reporting the crime, the hat was lying on the floor! Mr. Wright picked it up and placed it on the victim's head. In other words, in order to have seen Mr. Smith's bald head, you would have had to have been at the scene of the crime at the time of the crime. In other words, you'd have to be the real killer. Is that what you're trying to say? <laughs> Not bad, Apollo. I like how they're like, eh, you can hang out in the defense of Traver, it's <laughs> no <fine."> problem. <laughs> Mr. Gavin? I'm afraid I haven't been entirely honest with the court. NOBODY IS! <laughs> Nobody's Except being Pain honest! Except Payne and Apollo. What? I haven't been honest with the court! Oh, I assure you, I had the noblest of intentions. Oh, I did really? it all to protect my client, Mr. Wright. I changed some of the evidence so it wouldn't look like it was him. Which is why he got arrested as the main <laughs> suspect. <laughs> Yet, I'm afraid in the current situation I see little reason to hide anything. Very well. Allow me to tell you the truth of what happened that night. That that pose is kind of disconcerting. Eerie. Yeah. He kind of reminds me of Gant there, except Gant doesn't have his... Or no, he doesn't have his mouth open. Just like the way he tilts his head back and like the really condescending smile he has. It, it's kind of creepy a little bit. <sighs> He's like the blonde version of that guy from Oron High School Host Club. There's like this is dude... Is that the show about Satan working at McDonald's? No! That's the show about all of these guys who are in a club in high school to try and like woo the girls <laughs> that's like and every such. anime no ever. but it, it's, it's ridiculous it. <laughs> and th th there's this guy named kyoya who... wait isn't that called doki doki no wait no <laughs> no, no, no. no that's no. one guy wooing four girls <laughs> yeah no that's different no but there's this guy named kyoya who's like who has that exact voice that you're that you're doing who's like yes like i'm the one that's in charge of the club like oh, kind oh. of a little bit what 
You know who Gavin reminds me of? And like, I, I realized this a long time ago, but I'm just now remembering. Gavin reminds me of like the weird school teacher in Sonic X. <laughs> <laughs> yes! He totally yes, does! He does! <laughs> he has the wrong voice for it, but he totally does. Please say hello to Mr. Stewart, who will be your substitute. Hello, children. Hello, Mr. Stewart. Hey, hey, Ash. Where Ash. Ash? <laughs> yeah, hey, Chris. he basically was Ash. He basically was <laughs> Ash. Hey, Chris, what you doing with Knuckles today? Well, uh, I was hoping to go to, to the excavation site. Oh, well, I guess I'll be following you in my car. <laughs> <laughs> That's creepy. He would do that. He would just follow Chris around everywhere. I maybe watched a bit too much of that show. Finally, you may begin your testimony. <laughs> Tell us, how were you involved in the events of that fateful night? It also had the really, like, stereotypical, like, Hispanic maid lady who was voiced oh by my. a dude. Oh, I forgot about that! Yeah. Chris, you need to come in! I can't even do the voice. Please don't try. That fateful night. The rage I sensed in that man that night troubled me, so I returned to the club. I went down to the basement and peeked in through the little window to the hideout. I already found his... <laughs> Contradiction. <laughs> what? He his rage? Was he raging while he was at the table <laughs> with him? <laughs> the rage that I saw in that man. All Are you talking? Doing, okay, he's talking about Smith, not Phoenix. Yeah, Wright. all that he was doing. Kristoff. Kristoff went to eat with with um Mr. Wright. They ate. He left, and then he's like, "Oh, the rage of that man." He didn't see Mr. Smith. He passed them on the way out. Maybe Mr. Smith was like. <laughs> Phoenix Maybe, but that's, like, that's pretty weird. That's weird. <laughs> it must have been right after the murder took place. The victim was dead, as he appears in the photo. A bald head, an unconscious girl, and Wright holding a bottle in his hand. I sensed that was not the best place for me to be at that time, and so I left. That's when the call came from Wright. Wait, so you left? It takes three steps outside. Oh, oh can you call me uh, up? Uh, um, I'm at my office. I could see you out through the window, <laughs> Kristoff. <laughs> it burned down. Uh, wait, I can see the school. It's still there. I want fan art of like Phoenix right calling Kristoff and Kristoff literally being right outside the window. Phoenix is looking out. Yeah. <laughs> Just like, yeah, I can do that. So you witnessed the murder? For better or worse, I missed the actual moment of the deed. Mr. Gavin, may I remind you that you are on Mr. Wright's defense team. Your testimony is clearly disadvantageous to your client. He's like, oh, I don't care. What else could I say? I'm standing on the witness stand, after all. So you are, Mr. Gavin. I like how he's got that spark back in his eye. And you had to testify, as you just did. You had to tell them that you saw the scene of the crime through that little window. Uh, Mr. Wright? You had to say that. Because that was the only probable window of opportunity. Right, Apollo? Oh. Because it's in the basement! Mr. Wright, the defense should do the cross-examination, not the defendant. Mr. Justice, are you prepared? So yes, prepared. Your Honor. I can't believe I'm going up against Mr. Gavin. This trial is getting weirder and weirder. This is a great first trial. This is the best first case in any yeah. of the games, just for like... It's a good length, and even though we never did any investigating, I'm like, this is a great trial. It's really I gripping. Love I love how it's like you're, it sets it up like, oh, yep. Yeah, Typical again, like, there's, like, the guy who, like, yeah. got died. There's the one witness who it obviously was. Vincent. wait, it's not the witness. What? It's your, like, mentor? Yeah. They would be, like, if Mia Faye was the killer in the first case. Oh, yeah, it'd be game. great. <laughs> it would be so good. It's so great. That fateful night. The rage I, I sensed, sensed to that man. man. See? I, <laughs> rage. Yeah, I was gonna say that. I will say be that. cutting that out. <laughs> <laughs> to protect the identity of the, the one involved. That man? You mean Mr. Smith? He was different from the other customers. His aura, shall we say? It was red. Not I knew blue. he was a serious poker player, but it was more than that. So then, you knew the true nature of your client's job? Of course. But I also knew he wasn't engaged in gambling, which would be illegal. Well, it makes sense that he'd know. They were friends, after all. Worried for my friend, I returned to the club. You see, I feared this Mr. Smith might try to get be someone coming to settle an old score. What? What did I do? Oh, you said something- you said I feared this Mr. Smith might- is coming- bleh, and then like you- yeah, like, Wait, really? I huh? thought so. I thought I said it. Whatever, you can play the harmonica if you want. 
Thank you for picking the highest pitch, the most irritating <laughs> tone to play. <laughs> I didn't breathe in completely, though. I see. What happened then? I went down to the basement and peeked in through the little window. <laughs> the little window? You mean the one used to keep watch up the stairs? Yes, a relic of the ancient past. The Black Marketeers used it, I believe, along with the Three Musketeers. Why did you go for the trouble of peeking in through the window? Wouldn't it have been easier to just open the door and go into the room? I didn't want to upset Wright, you see. Upset Mr. Wright? Yes, what if my fears had been unfounded? I'd be walking in on their match. Bad form, to say the least. Um, that's not bad. Hmm, so far everything he's saying that makes sense. That doesn't make sense. What do you mean? It's not, okay, if you were playing, like, a video game with Link, and I walked in, you guys wouldn't be like, Oh, what a disaster, Marty's here, come okay, on. Okay, like, it's more like, if you walked in on the World Poker Championship 2019, even though that's, like, two years before this video yeah. gets uploaded, and, like, you're like, Hi, guys, just bang, rabbit, just thought I'd come and see, <laughs> see how, how things, things are going. going. <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah. <laughs> Must have been right after the murder took place. <laughs> Maybe not quite to that level, but similar. Kind of. How do you know it was right after the murder? Really, no need to shout justice. Uh, uh, sorry, cords of steel! Yeah. I was just getting to that part of my testimony. Ah, there he is. The coolest defense in the West we all know and love. Even when you're standing up there on the witness stand, some things never change. I was afraid you'd change too, right? But you haven't. You and that overbearing personality of yours. With friends like these, who needs enemies? I love how like passive aggressive and like oh, subtly I menacing do, that the Phoenix like... and Kristoff are against each other. Uh -huh. They're like very polite, but you can like just tell that they like, hate each other. Basically, <laughs> victim is dead. Yep. Yeah. By photo, you mean the second photograph of the crime scene? Precisely. You see, he wasn't wearing his hat then. I saw his head when he was dead. And when Mr. Wright came on and replaced his hat. E. Can you describe the scene of the crime for us? I, I apologize if people find, like, well, like why isn't Artie voicing pain? Because then Marty would literally have nobody to voice. It, yeah, this is then, a courtroom of all white dudes. And then I'd be <laughs> it's just like America. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. No, no <laughs> yeah, no. It's just like the county that we live in. It's just like the county we live in. <laughs> like, Ooh. it sounds terrible, but, like, on my way home from work, I've actually seen, like, someone of a different ethnicity walking I'm like I, I just took notice because I'm like you don't see that in our county very you really often don't because our county is extremely white, white. <laughs> yeah but and at the same time the reason I'm voicing pain as well is also like I interrupt way too much with like wait what if this was happening or like and it <laughs> helps me not do that quite as often I mean if you have something. theories about the case I totally want to hear them yeah. But, um... <laughs> I mean, it's getting more obvious now, but... Gen generally, when you interrupt with a theory, it's like a 50% chance of being completely right, and a 50% chance it's of being be so, like, so far, far off. off the case. Yeah. Like it's not even oh my gosh, there's been so many times. <laughs> a bald head, an unconscious girl... Hold it! <laughs> Those were the only three at the scene of the crime? Yes. As far as I saw, at least. Then we're back at where we started. The killer was the defendant, Phoenix Wright! Who else could it have been? But why didn't you talk to the police? Two reasons. First, I didn't actually witness the very moment of the crime. Second, my office was asked to defend Wright. Even after seeing what I had seen, I couldn't abandon my friend. Hmm. <laughs> what office are you in? There must have been someone else there at the moment of the crime! A fifth person! Justice. I just said I saw no one. Not a soul. Kristoff, you're already been lying. But that goes against what Mr. Wright said! Ah, uh, yes. This mysterious fourth person. Who would conveniently be the real killer, I suppose. Glad to see we agree, Mr. Gavin. Let me pose a question, then. Tell me. What possible reason did the real killer have to swap the cards in the victim's hand? Hmm? Perhaps you can show us a reason why such a thing would be necessary? How can I show something I can't find myself? We have. Remember, Apollo, the card that was swapped out was the fifth ace. The fifth ace, right. Well, Mr. Justice, the question of why the killer would swap out a card has been raised. Can you point to a reason? Yeah. Yeah, we can, but I think we still have another thing to press. No, not yet, Your Honor. 
Not yet! Ha! Pathetic! Look who's talking, mister! I've said five sentences here, and basically Kristoff is the prosecutor Oh, so I have fake hair! <laughs> that seems not real. Not yet! Try not ever! Hmm. Well, Mr. Gavin? Oh, I'm willing to wait for as long as it takes. Great! I don't even know what the heck I'm looking for! Apollo. Y yes sir Don't forget, you already know the answer. You just don't realize it yet. I... I already know the answer? Take a moment to think it over again, okay? I sensed that was not the best place for me to be at the time, so I left. Wouldn't it have been better to wait for the police to arrive? Remember though, by that time I was already Wright's defense attorney. It wouldn't do for me to become part of the investigation. That makes sense. Or does it? I'm confused. Well, what happened next? Oh, what do you think of the cross-examination music, by the way? It's fine. I think it's for, okay. for me, I think it fits super well with this case, but because it gets carried over to the other cases, I'm like, I always think of the Borscht Bowl Club when I hear this music. Yeah. Do, do, do. Some of it is like, it's fine, but it's not like my favorite <laughs> it, investigation music. Oh, I still it's, love the first games. The first games cross-examination music? Uh -huh. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, yeah, I dun, love that dun. music. It's yeah, that was that was really good. I like the second games a lot. The second, what was that one? Like the one where you're, this is so sad! Like the oh, dun, the sad music, dun, yeah. Dun. Where were you when the phone call came? Although, I must admit the 3DS games have the best cross-examination music. Oh, They're really sure. good. I had already left the Borscht Bull Club by that time. On the phone, he asked me to defend him. Naturally, I was surprised. I accepted, however. I couldn't abandon him. So kind of you. Hmm... So far, everything jives with Mr. Wright's testimony, I think. Is it going to be a problem for you to cross-examine your own boss? I- I'm fine! Who was it that taught me to never pull punches in cross-examination? It was you, Mr. Gavin. I learned it from watching you. Indeed. The rage I sensed in it. <laughs> it was rage. incredible. It's now or never. The defense would like to present evidence to the court. Evidence showing the reason why a card was swapped out. Then go ahead and point out your reason, Mr. Johnson. Kristoff just keeps having his glasses fall out. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, no, he's he's he's, he's got the anime like like you can't see my eyes yeah. behind my glasses. No, what's you thing? It, no, it, what? It, it, that's the sound effect. It's like Psh. it sounds like that, and then it goes like super fuzzy. <laughs> super Saiyan. Yeah. Then go ahead and point out your reason, Mr. Justice. Why did the killer take the fifth ace? Because of the because cell phone. Because of the cell died. phone. <laughs> the reason is made clear by this piece of evidence. I'm not sure how that piece of evidence makes anything clear, Mr. Justice. I see now that it was wrong of me to field you in a trial so soon, Justice. Wild bluffing, and even wilder accusations. You're almost as bad as another defense attorney I know. At least you call me Oh, one. I'm sure my office's reputation will recover, given time. Wow. Once you learn you can't bluff your way through life. Or court. He's right, good. This, this guy is a savage. Oh, that, that's that's why I was like, he's Kyoya, because Kyoya is the <laughs> utter savage. I will like show you. A I've never, after I've this. never seen that dialogue. He is. He even has the same smile. Like, okay, after this, I want to show you a picture of Kyoya and then like okay, a okay. scene of him because he's got the exact same smile as. That. This is one of the reasons I really like Kristoff, just because. He's always so polite, but you can tell yeah. he's just, like, oh, yeah. brutal underneath yeah. that. And that's, like, the best kind and of that's, brutal. <laughs> and that's... that's him. Okay. It's... it's hilarious. Ugh. Would you like to continue, Mr. Justice? Yes! Yes, Your Honor! I, I sure can't let my first trial end like this! <laughs> Alright, it, it, it's gotta be the bloody... Oh, we have... we can examine it. Blood. A single drop of blood marks the front of the card. And that's Turn all <laughs> that's all he had to say. Nothing. Oh, you didn't go through it. My reason is uh this. Is that an ace? Why why it it's got blood on it. Right next to the spade. What? What? This is insane! Why wasn't I told about this? Why? Could this be? Could this be the missing fifth ace? Kristoff's like sweating bullets. In inconceivable. How could you. What are you doing with that card? Uh, um, well, that's the thing. Why is Mr. <laughs> Gavin so upset? <laughs> it's just a fishy card from some fishy girl. Oh, that card? It's mine. That is, 
I picked it up at the Borscht Bowl Club that night after the murder had occurred. I gave it to my daughter. Cards are her stock and trade, after all. No, no! Impossible! Unacceptable! <laughs> the, the court can't accept this evidence! It's a fraud! A fraud? How can you be so sure? W what? I would think the only person who could claim it was a fraud would be the one who took the real card from the crime scene. The real killer. Allow me to elaborate. What if this trace of blood was the reason? The reason for... For the killer to take the card from the scene of the crime. Where are you going with this? Take another look at the photo, and at the victim's head. At the moment of the crime, his hat fell onto the floor, and a trickle of blood ran from his forehead down to the back of his head. Couldn't a drop of that blood have fallen on one of the cards? I suppose. The killer then took the card to hide the blood. R regardless, that evidence is non-permissible. Oh? Right? Regardless of how you wasted the last seven years, you used to be a lawyer. You know what a serious crime it is to conceal evidence. Oh, we can discuss the finer points of our legal system later. What's important now is that I've answered your question. What? What are you talking about? You wanted to know why the killer would have taken a card from the crime scene. And now, I've told you. That one drop of blood would have been decisive evidence, you see. The this is baseless conjecture. No, this baseless. Is baseless conjecture. <laughs> oh, I assure you, it's quite based. Wh what? It's amazing, really, how a single drop of blood on a single card can lead us to the truth. It's quite simple. Well, Apollo. Y yes. Try picturing the scene of the crime in your head. This is where the DS graphics really shine. Yeah. The murder took place in the hideout. The body of the luckless victim was found at the poker table. And, before the killer swapped a card out, there was a single card with a drop of blood on it in the victim's hand. Given this, there is one decisive problem with this scene. Well, what is it? Let's keep it simple, shall we? Given that there was a drop of blood on the card, Whose position in this diagram doesn't fit? The victims, the killers, the witnesses, or the second witnesses? Whose position doesn't fit with the bloody card? Oh. I wasn't expecting that question. Um... Here's the thing. If you have a card in hand, it's in front of you. It will if, be on the table. If the blood is gushing back, that means that it's going over there, not onto the table. So I think the victim's in the wrong spot? You are correct. Okay. Well, for one thing, the killer's in the wrong place. I think. You think? Mr. Justice, your job here is not to think, but to know. Ah, just looking at you reminds me of the old days. Not the good old days, per se. How does a good old penalty sound? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Phoenix Ray, at least you have the Let's try that one, one more time. And Mr. Justice... Think before you sink. That's a good phrase. <laughs> Let's keep it simple, shall we? <laughs> Who doesn't I, think? Is there a different dialogue for each different option, I wonder? Take we'll take a look. The witness's vocation is clearly at odds with... something. By witness, you mean Miss Olga Orly, correct? That's right. Uh, when it comes to cards, it's quick fingers Orly or no one. <laughs> hmm, I see. And... Uh, was I supposed to say something else? <laughs> A meaningful observation would help your case considerably. <laughs> Yet, do you not sense a great feeling of potential in his silence? <laughs> potential for a whopping penalty, <laughs> yes. <laughs> your Honor, please give me another chance. <sighs> Very well. That was Give worth it some it. thought this time. <laughs> it's Olga Orly or nobody. <laughs> the second witness's position is the problem. The second witness... That would be Mr. Gavin, yes. The second witness's position is far less problematic than yours right now, Justice. Or perhaps perilous is a better word. Ugh. I cannot see what the blood-stained card has to do with the second witness's vocation. I'm afraid you're more than in the peril of a penalty this time. <laughs> what if Mr. Gavin had, like, the biggest nosebleed in existence <laughs> through the window and it went... 
<laughs> if, okay, if I ever killed somebody, that would probably be what would happen, because I get nosebleeds kind of a lot. Like, not what, yeah, not yeah. every day, but, like, several times a year, I'll just get, like, one of, violent nosebleeds. One of my, not really friends, but, like, friends' sisters, when I first met her, she had the most insane nosebleed I had ever seen. They went through an entire roll of, like, paper towels. Because of Did how she have much, any blood left in her? That was, yeah, it was during a rehearsal for a show. Because our mom was helping. She was like, what the heck? Is there any blood in this child? <laughs> Apparently she gets like one a year and then she's oh. good. But it's ridiculous. <laughs> Your Honor, one more chance, please. I suppose there's only one chance left <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Do figure it over, Mr. Justice. Cool. Well, isn't it the victim's position that's the problem? I don't follow your logic here, Mr. Justice. Well, look, the victim was struck on the head, sending him back in his chair. You'd think that any blood would fall behind the body, not onto the table in front of him. Ah! Oh. Take a look at the photo again. If he bled in this position, the blood would fall on the floor, not on the cards. Why, that's right. So, what does this mean? Incidentally, we were sitting in swivel chairs. S swivel chairs? Oh, man. Apollo... Try turning the chair around. The chair was facing the other way? It would have to be. So we have to assume that at the time of the murder, the victim's chair was facing away from the table. When Mr. Wright returned from informing the police, which way was the chair facing? When I came back to the room, the body was facing and seeing the photo. That would mean... The killer turned the chair back around. Let's take the next step. Look at the diagram once more. We now know that the victim was facing away from the table at the time of the murder. But this creates another significant contradiction. Again? Let's test your reasoning skills again, shall we? Apollo, whose location on this diagram contradicts our new understanding of the crime? The victims, the killers, the witnesses, the second witnesses? Whose location creates a, lo a contradiction if the victim was facing away? Probably the second witness. What doesn't make sense is the second witness! You mean to say I don't make sense? <laughs> oh, um, no, of course you do, sir. As I thought. Help! <laughs> Poor Apollo. <laughs> Mr. Justice, I'm a little hard of hearing. Did you just say something? He has a boisterous voice. Maybe I don't give him a boisterous voice because I don't want to rip everyone's ears out of their heads. And your own vocal cords. Bah! Yeah, the tiger already students. did that in yeah. the last game. Uh -huh. Would you be kind enough to show the court one more time what you mean? Let's test your reasoning skills again. So uh, it was not Kristoff's. Well, the first witness said she saw that she saw cheating. Right. And that would be a problem. Actually, if you actually, away. Shady Smith's just like, I don't want to talk to you. That's more what I thought it would be. Like, he won, he's just like, stupid, and like turns around. <laughs> That's possible. Um. Well, the contradicting position here is the victims. Again? How many contradictions can one man have? <laughs> Though you're certainly giving him a run for his money. Uh oh, I missed again. The defense will refrain from contradicting itself out of a case. Oh, give him another chance, your honor. As you can see, he quite clearly regrets his mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure I see that, but very well. One more time, please. <laughs> it actually is different dialogue for every person every I time. I guess so. The contradicting point here is the location of the witness. Exactly what does the witness's location contradict? That is unclear, even to me. <laughs> Generally, one does not announce one's own ignorance with such aplomb. I have to take pride in something. Perhaps it would be kind enough to try again. Oh, wait, what would happen if we were like, it's the table! <laughs> the problem with this picture is here. Um, what exactly is supposed to be here? Ah, uh, darn sweaty hands! My finger must have slipped! <laughs> I hope you didn't do that on purpose, for your sake. This court does not look favorably upon those who waste the course that we have just gone through, like, all of our penalty meter. <laughs> Alright, one more time. Oh, man, Phoenix had such a disappointing look on yeah. his face. Uh, that was fantastic. Even I don't do that bad when bluffing. Basically. Killer, I guess. 
The victim was struck from the front, correct? Indeed. Well, wouldn't it be hard for the killer to hit him from the front? Sitting where his indicator currently is? I would think it'd be quite hard, yes. Yes, but what you're saying makes no sense! Why would the victim suddenly turn to face the wall in the middle of a game? I believe a sufficient reason will soon come, soon come to light. Wh what? There's something in this diagram that makes far less sense, actually. Look again at the diagram. Apollo, if the victim was struck here while he was sitting as shown here, where would his assailant be standing? Try marking it out on the assailant? diagram. Yeah. What's assailant mean? One who assaults another. Oh. What? B but there's no room to put a mark where the killer should be. Don't worry. Let's think it through and see what we find. We know the victim was facing toward the wall at the time of the crime. That's the only thing we knew know for sure. Try to forget about everything else. Where would the killer have to be standing to strike our victim from the front? I'm really glad we divided this up in two episodes. Is he standing in the cabinet? No, he's not. <laughs> <laughs> but, but just pick that anyway, because I want to see what happens. That's actually the right thing. To what? Pick. He popped out of he the- He was on the stairs! He popped out of the cabinet? Well, I guess the killer would have to be, uh, here? Anything to say, Mr. Justice? Um, sorry? A little late for that, I'm afraid. Penalty! <laughs> Come on, give me a little hint! Penalty, cheese, Try not to overthink things, Apollo. What does your instinct tell you? We know the victim was facing... Okay. Okay, that, that's, this is where it is. Okay, yeah, it actually is on the cabinet. It says try to forget everything else. Okay. The killer had to be standing, well, uh, here! You get points for flair, but that's about all you get! Ah, I thought I was onto something there, too! I hardly need to point out that standing there would be impossible! The victim is facing a solid cupboard! Or are you claiming the killer jumped- er, jumped into the cupboard? <laughs> are you claiming the killer climbed from the cupboard and hit him from above? Ha! <laughs> it's simple logic, really. If this was the only place the killer could have been standing, then that means that, at the very moment of the crime, Wait! I know! At the moment of the crime, the cupboard wasn't there! What's this now? I mean, that's the only explanation. Right, Mr. Gavin? Your Honor, I have a suggestion for the defense. We should arrange to examine the cupboard and the hideout immediately. Bailiff, send a team to the crime scene immediately. Have them try to move the cupboard. Ah, Your Honor? What? There's one more thing your men should look for. Please give this to the bailiff. Hmm? Hmm, yes, I see. Another burrito for you. You do belong in the courtroom after all, Mr. Wright. Come on. I do my best. Nobody objected to that? I'm so shocked. Well, let's forge ahead here while we wait. Look at the diagram once again. It's been changed. If the killer was standing here at the time of the crime, then this cupboard wasn't here. Which means... Apollo, try moving the cupboard. Oh! Thank you. That makes more sense. As you can see, the cupboard was the problem. At the time of the murder, it had to have been as shown here. Now everything is in place to reconstruct the moment of the crime. Oh my! What's this? What, what is it now? I love <laughs> Phoenix is just like, oh, oh no, what, what, what happened, happened now? now? Look at the diagram of the crime scene once more. It appears we've found yet another contradiction. What I believe to be the final contradiction, in fact. Huh? Oh, Dane. Notice something, Apollo? Our line of deduction is rapidly approaching its logical conclusion. Now then, Mr. Justice, please point to the new contradicting indicator. Is it the victim, the killer, the witness, the second witness? Which indicator in this diagram contradicts what we know about the crime? Uh, obvious. The table! No. This indicator has to be wrong! Which indicator is that? I'm not sure I see anything there. Um, look closer? Oh yes, I see something there now! Why, it's a penalty! <laughs> the judge is a lot funnier in this. <laughs> Mr. Justice, once more with feeling, please. What's yes, more? your honor. With feeling? <laughs> It's like what every choreographer says. Yep. <laughs> what doesn't make sense is the witness. Miss Olga Orly? Wasn't she unconscious at the time? Um, yes, I suppose she was. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I fail to see how an unconscious witness could do contradict anything. Yet this conscious judge can penalize you, and he just did. <laughs> Your Honor, one more chance, please. I suppose. Do give it some thought, though. This'll be funny. This man, old oh man, he played too. He played too on his Mountain Dew. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. I haven't heard that song in forever. <laughs> the indicator in question is the victims. I see no particular problem with the victim's new location. Ah, good. That's good to know. No, it's not. Penalty. <laughs> what's more, if you would, correctly this time. I like to think even the judge knows what's up here. Oh, but he's yeah. like, really, Justice? Really? <laughs> You're messing up on purpose. The indicator that doesn't make sense here is the killer. Oh, really? Yeah, really. Well, maybe really. It would behoove the defense to be really sure before wasting our valuable time. <laughs> Penalty. We're just waiting for the bailiff uh -huh. to get back anyways. Maybe if I just came clean and admitted that I'm totally lost, he'd go easy on me. Mr. Justice, the court will have your answer one more time. <laughs> and for the love of all that is right and good, please think before you point. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. Judge is just totally out of patience oh, yeah. at this point. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he needs a number burrito. Yep. Um... About this cupboard, are we all okay with assuming it was moved? Sure, why not? Well, if it was, something really doesn't fit. The cupboard would completely cover up the window to the stairs. Oh! That's right, someone standing outside wouldn't be able to see in. Someone like Mr. Gavin. What, what did you say? Oh, is the coolest defense in the West be losing his cool? <laughs> Don't expect me to play along with your little game, right? It's only a game until someone gets killed, Mr. Gavin. And someone was. While the window to that room was blocked by a cupboard. So, Mr. Gavin? Perhaps you'd like to explain to the court exactly where did you witness the crime scene from? Excuse me, Your Honor! Order! This is a court of law and I will have order. We, we just now received word from our investigative team at the Borscht Bowl Club. They've examined the cupboard in the hideout, Your Honor. Oh, that was fast. And what did they find? Well, Your Honor, it turns out there's a secret passage behind it. What? There's a secret passage? Ah, uh, yes. I believe I mentioned something of the sort before. You did? This is one of the tricks to the room many of our regulars know about. I do remember him saying something about that now that he mentions it. I don't. Not about the secret passage in particular, but he oh. mentioned the room had a lot of tricks to it. A secret passage is a handy thing to have when you're engaged in illegal goings-on. Never know when you might need to duck away from the eyes of the law. So the room has a secret passage. Where does it go? The other side connects to the restaurant above. The underworld bosses could get away from the cops and enjoy a cold bowl of borscht, no doubt. Just like our killer. You see where our line of simple deductive reasoning has led us, Apollo? I see it, but I don't believe it. That girl wasn't kidding when she said I needed this trump card for the last hand. At the time of the murder, the window was blocked and the victim's hat was only off his head for a few minutes between Mr. Smith's murder and Mr. Wright's return from calling the cops. In other words, the only place anyone could have seen the victim's bald head was from inside the hideout. Well, Mr. Gavin, come on, say something. Hmm. Dare I ask what really happened that night? Actually, I think we can probably figure it out ourselves at this point. That night, for whatever reason, our killer had a date with Mr. Smith. A date with Destiny. Where he crouched, hidden in the secret passageway beneath, behind the cupboard. Holding his breath, waiting for just the right moment. Then the chance came, and he took it. Ah! Ah! <laughs> that was terrible. That was Olga. Oh, oh, whoops. <laughs> Why do you do that? Wait, Why do you, wait here, I'll help. I forgot. I thought that was Kristoff killing the guy. Eek! <laughs> <laughs> He's like, he has a girly scream. <laughs> Miss Olga Orley was out cold, struck by Mr. Smith. But his time was soon to come. Mr. Wright went upstairs to call the cops, leaving Mr. Shady Smith alone in the hideout with the unconscious dealer. Then our killer stepped out from the secret passageway into the hideout. The victim must have heard the cupboard sliding aside. 
He wheeled his chair around to look, and... After the deed was done, the criminal must have seen the blood on the card. He would have, of course, realized the need to destroy the evidence. That single spot of blood told the whole story of the crime. Too bad for him he didn't linger any longer in the hideout that night. If he had, he might have noticed the cards on the floor. And the fact that they were all red. I thought he was going to take off his glasses. <laughs> he can't see without them. It's like Velma. Exactly. Or like me. Clearly, since I always mess up text. Well, it seems this trial has taken yet another turn. I'm truly, truly sorry I had to see this day come, Mr. Gavin. Mr. Gavin? Mr. Payne? Yeah! Um, yes, you're on. The prosecution will continue its investigation. As for Mr. Phoenix Wright, the defendant, he is hereby cleared of all suspicion. What? Believe me when I say that I don't believe this is happening, Mr. Gavin. But I'm afraid circumstances call for me to issue a warrant for your arrest. Immediately. Objection. Oh, no need to apologize. I rather enjoyed myself. It's not every day you get to witness a legendary attorney's dirty tactics firsthand. Your point, Mr. Gavin? Frankly, Your Honor, I'm shocked that a person of your caliber would be taken in by such a low-grade parlor trick. Um, excuse me? The defendant is cleared of all suspicion. This is hardly the time for jokes, Your Honor. Mr. Wright hasn't proven anyone's guilt or innocence here. What he has done is use illegal evidence to put the blame on someone else. And not just anyone else, but me, his own defense attorney. Uh, illegal evidence? Objection. Let me ask you, Mr. Gavin, is there still any reason at present to suspect me of wrongdoing? Of course. This bottle, for instance. The bottle of grape juice Mr. Wright was drinking? How do you intend to explain away the fingerprints on the murder weapon? And not just any fingerprints, am I right, Mr. Payne? Uh, actually, yes, the fingerprints on the bottle were uh, upside down. I seem to recall this being an issue earlier. The court and this case demand an explanation. I can think of only one reason why one would hold a bottle upside down. And that is to hit someone with the bottom of the bottle. Well, Your Honor? Hmm. Ah, see how the cotfish squirms to the last. Well, Apollo? Y yes Your boss seems awfully concerned with th about this bottle still. But I'm sure you can come up with a suitable explanation. Just like that. Um, yeah. Just like what? Why would anyone grab a bottle upside down other than to... <clears throat> Don't let him trick you into thinking his explanation is the only legitimate one. Turns out Phoenix Wright just drank a lot of grape juice. He was like, <laughs> no, no, he was like, whoa! Like, swinging the bottle around. <laughs> this is grape juice, not wine, Marty. I said grape juice. <laughs> I know. Well, why would people go, <laughs> with grape juice? <laughs> he goes a little bit crazy when he has his grape juice. I can't drink any more iced tea, because if I drink any more iced tea, I get crazy. <laughs> why is that like that? Not the only time you've quoted that in our Because place. it's, because we've had Godot drinking coffee, and we've also had him drink. <laughs> it's, okay, it's juice. not the drinks that's concerned me. It's that quote in particular. It's a because really it's, obscure, it's really kind of obscure but it's kind of funny. Um, is there really another? Take another look at the court record. I believe you'll find a simple answer there in plain sight. Um, how about you just say the answer in plain words? Yeah. It would be hasty to deliver a verdict with unanswered questions, indeed. Well, Mr. Justice. Mr. Gavin said that the court and his this case demand an explanation. Don't worry, justice won't leave until justice is done. Perhaps wow. the defense would care to enlighten the court. What evidence do you have to explain why the fingerprints on the bottle are upside down? This is the hardest part of the case by far. What evidence do we have? Is okay. it pictures? So we have attorney's badge, Smith's autopsy report. Yep. Shady Smith, he's a male. He died April 17th between 1.45 a.m. and 2.15 a.m. Yep, blunt Cerebral trauma. Cerebral hyperdamaging, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Crime photo one. Mm. Here's looking at you, kid. Oh, <laughs> man. Okay. Wait, is that the last line of Casablanca? I, I can't remember if probably. that's the last line or if it's, um, this looks like the beginning of a beautiful it's friendship. It's that one. 
Okay, but what, what am I thinking of with here's looking at you, kid? Is that also Casablanca, just not the last line? I think that is. Okay. Either that or it's Gone with the Wind. No, wait, Gone with the Wind this, might be the one. It's frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. Uh, that's Gone with the Wind. That's not the last line, though. No, I don't think so. But yeah, I think both of those are in Casablanca. I haven't Maybe. seen Casablanca. I don't know, but the, the guy's outfit just reminded me of yeah, like, that yeah. time period. We have the deadly bottle. It's empty. Mm -hmm. His fingerprints are upside down. Yep. Crime food too. Oh, that really hurt. Okay, Ow. bad. We do that every time. Um, <laughs> he has such next, a stink face he on. does. Olga's photo. Hey, man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Phoenix Wright. Here's the thing. How would you like to join my multi-level marketing? <laughs> I'm selling these essential oils. I'm trying to. Okay. I'm like imagining. Nobody can see this, but I'm trying to imagine. Like, yeah, you would do it like this. Yeah. If you were crazy, you'd do it like this. He feeds rice chip. What a crazy character! Grips his bottles upside down. <laughs> no, but maybe. And uh, no, that still wouldn't make any sense. That's so weird to be like. <laughs> I wish people could see him. No, okay, no, it's people, like. People, hold your hand upside down. No, pretend you do... to grip the top of a bottle and then. <laughs> no, you do this. You, you grab it. You like can't do in... that. It would spill on the floor before it reaches your mouth. You use a funnel. <laughs> they just had beer, like Paul, or not beer Paul. They had beer, beer goggles, pong. beer goggles. Okay, maybe <laughs> some of it, juice. maybe because there were so many bottles, he like swapped a bottle with Wright's <laughs> fingerprints that were weirdly upside down for the bottle that he used. <laughs> right, I think this is the beginning of a beautiful <laughs> friendship. Not me, man. Not me. Uh, next. <laughs> oh, the chip photo. There's a bottle. It's chill. Victim's hand. We don't need that. He had a full house. And then we the bloody ace. That. Oh, really? Shoot. Yeah, what we don't have that? a lot of evidence. It's, it's gonna pretty be tough. Something, it's going to be something involving... Like this, I think I did trial and error my first time I did it. I wonder if it has something to do with the phone. Having tape on it. No, I think Wright's just cheap. Okay, okay. I'm wondering if it's like they swapped the bottle. Or if it's... Even so, that doesn't explain why his fingerprints are upside down on the bottle. Maybe Wright's just weird. <laughs> do you want to just try that? No. Wright's just weird, or do you want to just try the bottle? Yeah, sure. We have to try something stupid. Now seems like the perfect time for a penalty. What do they expect? I have no idea how to explain it. You're thinking too hard, Apollo. The answer's right in front of you. Just reach down and pick it up. Or try picturing situations in one which one might try to grab the bottle upside down. Perhaps the defense would care to enlighten the court. So uh, hmm. here, here's your glass of grape juice, man. <laughs> drink, drink, drink. That would not work. Maybe he was just trying to maybe be a it's pirate. because of the struggle. Like, cause the cause Smith hit Olga in the head, so maybe he like tried to grab the bottle upside down hmm, with, in the struggle. But here's the thing: there's no Smith prints. Correct. <sighs> it's not the autopsy report, there's no way. It's nothing not nothing on the second page? No. I don't think it'd be anything on the second page. I think it has to do with that first photo. This one? Yeah. Because there's that bottle, and if it's like every movie, the bottle will fall off the table. And then... I don't know. I don't know. I think it might have to be that, but it might be for the wrong reason. Nope. Now seems like the perfect time to rewind the same state. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm at a loss, but I want to get this right. I'm not sure if you will. Sometimes I'm smart. You're oftentimes right for the wrong reasons. You should- that is a very- that's very true where I'm like, it'll be this, and you're like, no, but you but have yes. the right evidence. Like, you're using it the wrong way, but it's working. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, when I play puzzle games and I somehow get a different puzzle <laughs> solved. Um, I'm just gonna... What's Olga's photo of again? Uh... <laughs> yeah, no, let's present that one! Because there's all these bottles on the floor. It's actually easier to show you than explain, Your Honor. Place that bottle on the floor next to your chair. Excuse me? On the floor. Oh. Yes, now reach down and pick it up. Without getting out of your chair. Ah! See? You naturally go to pick up the bottle by its neck. With your
your fingers upside down. Look at this photograph taken on the night of the murder. The defendant, Mr. Wright, sat here, playing piano, bottles of grape juice on the floor to the side of his piano bench. He would have naturally picked up the bottles upside down several times. Wow, I can't believe it was that simple. Recall our dinner that evening, Kristoff. I was drinking my usual juice then, too. Basically, you used the bottle on the table to do the deed, but then you must have remembered. So you went and picked up one of the bottles from under the piano, and you switched the bottles. You took one of Mr. Wright's bottles and made it look like the murder weapon. So yeah, it was my initial idea. Where they swapped the bottles, Where they yeah. swapped the bottles. But, yeah, the upside-down fingerprints are tough. Order, order, order! What do you have to say to these charges, Mr. Gavin? It's dumb. Fascinating. So this is the legendary attorney's famed tactic of misdirection. What? What? You claim that I switched the bottle? Where is your proof? P proof That's a fiend? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, uh... As I thought, more baseless conjecture. I'm afraid your bottle of proof is quite empty. Objection! I wouldn't be so sure about that. Your Honor, when you initiated the investigation of the hideout earlier, do you recall I requested, a, I requested an additional investigation? Yeah. Ah, yes. I have your memo about that here. Retrieve the bottles from under the piano at the Borscht Bull Club. And here's one of the bottles in question. Humph. <laughs> what, are you going to dust that for fingerprints too? I would be surprised if any were on that but his. Mr. Gavin probably wouldn't have made such a novice mistake true. That bottle won't bear a trace of anything! Say, Apollo. Y yes Why don't you go ahead and examine that bottle? B but why Just humor me. Mr. Wright. That bottle will solve this case once and for all. What? That's some bottle! Oh, That's is he gonna, some is he gonna bottle. have the card in it? Yep. There's something inside the bottle! What's this? Th that card! It can't be! Recall that unpleasant woman's testimony for a moment. Er, Miss Olga Orly? Yes, our little swindling divachka. <laughs> that night I planted the card like I was supposed to. And Wright lost the last hand just like he was supposed to. Then Smith searched it! But the planted card was gone! The trap failed. W wait this isn't- you're telling me that this is the planted card you disposed of? The one you mentioned in this piece of testimony? I happened to put my hand in my pocket and found a card. Yes, I snuck a peek at it and found it was the Five of Hearts. I had a feeling something might happen, so I disposed of the card before the game. Disposed? Where? There's an empty bottle of grape juice I'd been drinking right beside me. I threw the card inside the bottle. Five of hearts. This is the card. The bottles were swapped. And the only one who could have done that was the fourth person in the club that night. You, Mr. Kristoff Gavin. What? Why is everything levitating? Oh. Okay. Huh. One of the calmer breakdowns of the series, I'd say. <laughs> He's also a calm guy. The face race just like, oh yeah. That is all. Is this your idea of revenge, Phoenix Wright? Revenge? Revenge for the events that took away your attorney's badge seven years ago? My past is like my logic. Straight and true. Nothing's changed. All I did was point the finger of justice in the proper direction. Fine. I'm glad we could have this little tete, -tete right? This- this is insane! What about me? Don't I get to prosecute anyone? <laughs> Sorry, Payne. You are officially no longer needed as a prosecutor. <laughs> that should have been the last game that he's in. I believe this time we finally come to the end of our trial. Sweet. Mr. Payne, do you have a report for us on Christoph Gavin? 
He's admitted everything. We're processing his arrest now. I see. Still, one has to wonder why he would do such a thing. He didn't even have a connection to the victim, did he? Uh, none that we know of. Mr. Wright, have you anything to add? I'm afraid I can't shed any more light on the matter. About this victim, Mr. Shady Smith. His occupation was listed as Traveler. That is incredibly vague. An odd profession to be sure, and that's all we know about him. I'll arrange a follow-up investigation, Your Honor. Good. Mr. Wright? Yes? Seven years, and you still haven't lost your touch. Christoph Gavin was a man of much significance for me, both as a friend and a lawyer. He was extremely talented, to be sure. I needed two things before I could confront him. The first was a place where no injustice would be tolerated, this courtroom. The second was a man who would tolerate no injustice. In other words, a defense attorney. You, Apollo. Me? A dark time is coming for our legal system. A twisting of justice brought on by our very own court system. We have to set it right. Mr. Wright! Our work lies ahead of us. And I, for one, am looking forward to it. Oh, his eye's no longer lazy. Well, this seems like a good time to announce a verdict. This court finds the defendant, Mr. Phoenix Wright. That was actually a different sprite. NOT GUILTY! I never would have guessed you would ever be on the trial stand again, but... He's been... This is the fourth time yeah. now. <laughs> court is adjourned. For those who don't uh, know, uh, first time, classroom trial. Second time... Uh, okay, classroom trial doesn't really count. Okay, fine. Besides that, that this is the third time. First time, um, he got accused of killing the weird pharmacology student do that Dolly actually yeah. killed. Second time, Red White's like, oh, by the way, you're the killer now, Mr. Rob. And then, yeah, uh, I forgot about that. And then uh, the third time is this. Yeah. <laughs> April 20th, 4.28 p.m., District Court, Defendant Lobby number three. Thanks, Apollo. You came through just like I thought you would. Oh, I'm pretty sure yeah. I didn't do a thing in there. It was you who cornered Mr. Gaff, the killer. I couldn't have done it by myself. You sensed it too, today, didn't you? Your ability. Ability? Yes, a sensitivity I lack. You'll come to understand it soon enough. Wait, I wonder if he means... I have one question for the witness then. You say you saw the moment the defendant hit the victim. Is this true? Uh, of course it's true. What's this weird vibe I'm getting? What? What was that, Mr. Wright? You'll have to find the answer to that question yourself. The answer, right. Today was full of questions about answers, most of them about Mr. Gavin. What possible reason could he have to commit murder? Perhaps you'll learn that in the days to come. Huh? Wait, you don't know, do you? This locket is the key. Huh? huh? Oh, that reminds me, I met the girl whose picture is in your locket. Yeah, she's pretty weird, and I want to voice her better. Your daughter, right? That's right. She's my daughter. You know, you were right about this locket. Eh? I took this off his neck the night he died. But it looks like our dear Russian scam artist saw me. So the truth is, this locket really did belong to him. Wait! But that's perjury! You testified! You said that locket was yours! I said no such thing, actually. Huh? I merely said that it was a locket with my daughter's picture inside. <laughs> he just stole the locket. He's like, I put my daughter's know, picture sure. inside. <laughs> wow. Either that or the guy randomly had a picture of the faces of a daughter, Wait, which is more, really creepy. That's more what I was, yeah. <laughs> a subtle distinction, but a distinction nonetheless. And it's the truth. Wait, but then why? Why was the victim wearing a locket with a picture of your daughter inside it? Sometimes the straightest path to the truth isn't the best one. Give it time. You're still just getting started with your career. Also, why is your daughter, like, 16? <laughs> uh, maybe. <laughs> or older, or younger. Speaking of which, I may be out of a job. I work for Gavin Law Offices, after all. I still can't believe I just saw Mr. Gavin get led away in handcuffs. Apollo. Yes? How about coming to work for me? Yes! <laughs> eh? You mean, at the Wright & Company Law Offices? I mean, there's not a single attorney in my generation that doesn't know it. I can't imagine that to be true, but... Wait, but didn't you... You're not a... Oh, I turned in my badge, yes. 
I'm not an attorney anymore. That incident seven years ago. That legendary trial. What legendary stupid trial? And at the middle of it all was one man. Phoenix Wright! Pro watch, Maya got murdered. Probably. The case reached its sad conclusion, and he left Maw for good. Have you ever thought about coming back to the courts? I'm not qualified to stand in a court of law, I'm afraid. Didn't you notice in today's trial? There was a single piece of forged evidence. Forged evidence? W what are you talking about? Was it that card? I'm talking about evidence that shouldn't have existed. A naughty magician's <laughs> trick. Hmm, one piece of evidence struck me as odd, it's true. It just seemed, well, too perfect. I'll bet this was the forged evidence. My attorney's bad! I'm not an attorney! <laughs> Sorry! Or maybe you didn't notice. Uh, guess that wasn't it. No matter, I'll tell you. It was this. <laughs> yeah, thanks. <laughs> don't ask, our lips are sealed. It's a vase. <laughs> you mean this, don't you? I got this from your, um, your daughter, Mr. Wright. Yes. That card couldn't have been found at the crime scene. Why? Because the killer took it with him when he left. Leaving the wrong card in its place. Luckily for us. The court can't accept this evidence! It's a fraud! A fraud? How can you be so sure? I would think the only person who could claim it was a fraud would be the one who took the real card from the crime scene. The real killer. That's the thing. You have to understand the insane amount of deduction Phoenix saw. Like, yeah. Because Phoenix came back to the room. He didn't ever see the boy ace. Yeah. All, all he did was see the wrong card. He must have deduced, like, he's like, wait, that used to be a, a, a card. Why would it leave? And then he must have been like, wait, blood must have dripped on it. And that would expose everything. And then yeah. he forged it. That's a lot of deduction. That, that's like Sherlock Holmes level stuff That's right like there. you were a lawyer seven years ago. Like, I actually thought it was a plot hole. I'm like, well, no, he could have. But he also kind of got lucky putting the blood in the right spot. He's always lucky. <laughs> yeah, it's true. My verdict was already handed down seven years ago. Then, you really? Yes, I forged this card. One look at the crime scene should have told you it wasn't real. But, but you can't do something like that and call yourself an attorney! I don't call myself an attorney. Who's calling themselves an attorney, <laughs> Apollo? So it's true. The rumor is true! Seven years ago. None of that matters much now, does it? Did you just smack him? I, I punched him. <laughs> Well, kind of justified. He just gave us forged evidence and made us present it. That could have cost us our entire career. Yeah! It's your story from here on out, Apollo. Perhaps I can help you turn the next page. Okay, that's... My office's ad address. Drop in if you like. That's kind of the perfect... That sounds stupid. That's kind of the perfect way, though, to switch it over like, you're the new protagonist. Go get him. Yeah. Except a lot of people hated it, kind of like they hated Last Jedi, where they didn't like how Luke turned out. <laughs> uh, but that's different. Yeah, it is. This, he, Phoenix Wright is more like Phoenix Wright if he'd seen some things. Yeah, and seven years has happened. Luke is more like, why are you so ugly and also super weird? That's, that hurts. That's what Mark <laughs> Hamill actually looks like. Well, okay, he's fine. It's just more like, I don't know. But this, we're not here to talk about that. Yeah. Mr. Wright. Oh, about your uppercut. Try yelling, TAKE THAT next time. I find it packs a little more punch. And Apollo, thanks for today. I had a good time. Okay. Well, I hope we see you again. And with that, Mr. Wright walked out the door. And that's how my first trial ended. I, a lot of mysteries went unsolved. And at the time, I had no idea that they were all related. Every mystery that day, connected by a single thread of logic. I find that out soon enough. My name is Apollo Justice, attorney at law, and this is how my story begins. Oh my gosh. The end. That was a great game, guys. <laughs> That's the whole game. <laughs> That's, the whole That's game. all Apollo Justice. No. A brand new episode has been added. Turnabout Corner. Corner? Yeah. That's so vague. Alright, so I'll just give some backstory. Most people are like, the third case in this game is so bad. Almost as bad as the circus case. For me... It's that episode one. two is the worst case in the whole series by a long shot. I kind of want to see what makes it so bad. Can I see the picture before? There's no pictures in this. What? No pictures. Come on! That's like the reason.
reason you beat the case is so you can get the cool picture. <laughs> not to learn the story, not to have fun. You just want to have to see that poster at the end. <laughs> <laughs> that sick poster. Yeah. Most people don't have a problem with this case. They kind of consider it average. I'm like, both Link and I are like, this is by far the worst case. Well, I'll have to see them as, <laughs> as your sibling. I gotta see Yeah, you might actually agree. really like it because there will be a lot of crazy characters for you to voice. I like crazy characters. That's it for today, everybody. Thanks for watching, and despite me already being pessimistic about the second case, tune in. It's going to be entertaining. I'm, okay, it's here's, just not. Here's my good. imagination. <laughs> Apollo Justice walks into the Wright and Company law offices, and he sees like Maya Fey, and he sees Pearl, and he sees like Magician Girl, and they're all like jumping around and doing samurai kicks. And he's like, "Why did I join this attorney of law?" That's Marty's prediction. We'll see if it comes true next time. Until we meet again, my friends, have a great day, and God bless. Justice for all! With a samurai punch, and a samurai kick, and a samurai slap! Wham! Wow. <laughs>